So we finally have an identity, an official identity about the SmackDown hacker. Now, last night, Mustafa Ali on Monday Night Raw revealed that he indeed was the hacker over the last however many months on SmackDown. We haven't actually heard anything really from the SmackDown hacker in a long, long time. But earlier this year, starting in around January, we saw, you remember those, the glitches on the screen during SmackDown. We saw the cut-ins and the interruptions of the live broadcast feed. We even saw a few reveals. We saw a few promos with a blank face, uh, voice distorted, voice modulated voice, talking about being the hacker of Friday nights. Well, we now know that it is Mustafa Ali. Now, this is no surprise, really. Everyone knew that the SmackDown hacker was Mustafa Ali. It looked like those plans and those storylines had been dropped, though, when Mustafa Ali was traded from SmackDown to Raw in around, when was it, July, June time? Uh, but after a loss to the Hurt Business last night on Monday Night Raw, Mustafa Ali dropped the bombshell during a backstage promo. He said, quote, That mysterious hacker over on SmackDown, that was me. And I did it because I want the entire world to know that this is a sick place, is infecting everyone with greed and corruption. So this was after the <laughs> Retribution lost a tag team match to the Hurt Business. And after the match, they actually got destroyed by the fiend Bray Wyatt as well. Because earlier on in the night, we had Raw open with Alexa Bliss in the ring. She introduced the fiend. The fiend came out then surrounding the ring was Retribution. They attempted to go after the fiend, but the lights went out. They disappeared. But then after this loss to the Hurt Business, uh, they were attacked. The entire the entirety of the faction, apart from Mustafa Ali, who managed to run away, was attacked by the fiend. And uh, it's interesting. It's interesting because as the mysterious SmackDown hacker, Mustafa Ali, they dropped cryptic vignettes occasionally on random episodes of SmackDown. Uh, we even saw the hacker get involved in the Dolph Ziggler, Otis and Mandy Rose storyline. Of course, the hacker was the one that revealed that Dolph Ziggler and Sonya Deville had set up the plan to separate Mandy Rose and Otis by interfering with the Valentine's Day plans. It was a great storyline. It was a great storyline. And it's interesting because a couple of weeks ago, when uh, Mustafa Ali was revealed as the leader of Retribution on Raw, a lot of people said, well, this is a great way to tie in the, the hacker storyline because Mustafa Ali was always planned. He was always slated to be the, the, the hacker on SmackDown. That was always the plan. When it came to the SmackDown hacker gimmick, it was always meant to be Mustafa Ali. So I think a lot of people said if they can find a way to tie this in, it would be great. And I think that's what everyone wanted. And it's interesting because I think last night shows that you can you, you never know what you want until you get it. Because I think a lot of people last night on, uh, well, for the last few weeks certainly have been saying... Let's try the, tie in the SmackDown hacking gimmick because everyone knew that it was meant to be Mustafa Ali. And that's what we got last night. And then immediately I look on social media today and I see so many people, wow, they managed to pay off the SmackDown hacker gimmick in the worst way possible, the most anticlimactic way possible. And I don't necessarily disagree with that. It is anticlimactic. But what I will say is at least we got a payoff. At least we got a payoff. And maybe I am setting the bar really low when it comes to that storyline, but... For a while, it didn't look like we were going to get a payoff. And I think that's important to realize too. For a while, it didn't look like we were going to get any form of payoff when it comes to the SmackDown hacking angle because it was just dropped. The moment Mustafa Ali went to Monday Night Raw, the angle was dropped. And if anything, it was actually dropped a while before that because we hadn't heard anything when it comes to the SmackDown hacker in a while because it had been dropped. It had been dropped. And that was the most frustrating thing for me personally because I enjoyed the SmackDown hacking gimmick. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was unique. It had people talking. Whenever you have these mystery storylines who is it mystery reveal a person hiding in the shadows people love that because pro wrestling is about speculating pro wrestling is about people guessing what's going to happen next trying to find out what happens next any great tv show is about what's going to happen next and trying to get people to look one way while you go another direction all of that sort of stuff is great is great and that's what people want to see and i think people really enjoyed the smackdown hacking gimmick they dropped it because they wanted to go in a different direction. I disagreed with that. I think a lot of people did. People were invested in the storyline. People wanted to see where we were going to go when it comes to the SmackDown hacking gimmick, but they dropped it. And I will give the WWE credit for trying to at least put some logic back into the storylines. They acknowledged it last night. They could have just left it. They could have just left it and said, you know what, we're not going to talk about the SmackDown hacking gimmick. But they did. They tried to tie it in. At least we have a payoff. Is it the payoff we wanted? No, it's not the payoff we wanted, but it's a payoff. And I think some people need to realize that 
it's not what we wanted and it's not the the outcome that we wanted for the SmackDown hacking gimmick. It felt like GTV Volume 2 when they just dropped it. It felt like a, a gimmick that they would never revisit and they would never explain. At least we have some attempt at logic and some attempt at trying to bring some sense into the storyline. So I'm not against that. I am against, obviously, I wish they'd have kept the gimmick going on SmackDown. I did think it had... I think it had a lot of potential, but they didn't go with it. They didn't go with it, but at least they've tied it into this. And I do think it's interesting. I do think it's interesting because I do think it ties in to Retribution. If you look at the promo that Mustafa Ali cut last night on Raw, he's very he's very honest. He says that SmackDown hacker gimmick was me. And for months and months, while they couldn't find a way to make a buck out of Mustafa Ali, I sat at home and threw laptops, through Wi-Fi, through digital media, I saw everyone's secret. And I think that ties into retribution quite well. I think that's quite interesting. Now, again, is it the is it the the vision we thought we were going to get for the SmackDown hacker? Of course it isn't. But it puts Mustafa Ali in this position of power now. Not only is he a leader of a faction, but he also has all of this dirt, all of this information, all of this scandalous secrets about WWE superstars that he has been sitting on for months. So as the leader of Retribution, he has almost an ability to blackmail. He has an ability to hold things over the head of superstars that they are feuding with. I think that's very interesting. I think that is somewhere that they're looking to go with this storyline. I think that's interesting. And I think that's a good way to tie it in. Again, is it perfect? No. Is Retribution perfect? Hell no. There are so many issues, as I mentioned before, about logic. Logic is the word of the day here, especially when it comes to Retribution. But there are so many issues when it comes to logic of retribution about getting contracts uh, an anarchy faction all of this sort of stuff but I do think there is an element of logic when it comes to him being the hacker he was always meant to be the hacker but using the information that he has using the footage that he has and using the secrets that he has found out using that going forward for retribution I think there is something to that and I think that's interesting however it looks like, or it has been speculated, that WWE might have already started to give up on Retribution. As I mentioned, there have been a lot of critics and a lot of people speculating and discussing about how badly Retribution have been booked, even from the start, even from when you didn't have the NXT superstars of you know Dominic Dajakovic, Mia Yim, Dio Madden, uh, Shane Thorne, etc. be involved in this. You had a lot of people criticizing the way that this angle was booked, the lack of logic, the attacks, the contracts, all of this sort of stuff. And now it has been speculated that WWE has already started to give up on the faction. Now, Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter and on Wrestling Observer Radio spoke about that WWE might have already started to give up on Retribution. And this was evidenced by T-Bar tapping out to Bobby Lashley last night on Raw. He said, quote, he taps out. Can you imagine? It's like after all the work they did to in the start of this thing, it's like they've already given up. Even though they gave lip service after like they haven't and they still gave Ali a promo and everything. But it's like, come on. And the other thing, too, as far as that went, it felt to me that Retribution is the new Ricochet, Apollo Crews, Cedric Alexander and Mustafa Ali group, except now they're just masked guys. Now, he also pointed out how easily The Fiend single-handedly destroyed Retribution after the match. He said, quote, Bray Wyatt goes in there, Uranagis and Sister Abigail's everybody all by himself. And now they're just coming back with an interview where Mustafa Ali is promising to do this and that, end quote. So... I think when it comes to our WWE giving up on Retribution, you can't take Dave Meltzer's word as gospel. I think what what he's saying there is speculating on his part. I don't think he has any extra details. I think he's just trying to read the tea leaves, as it were, trying to read the situation when it comes to Retribution in terms of their booking last night on Raw. I agree with him. I think the booking of Retribution last night was very questionable, very, very questionable. I think this is what their second match on Monday Night Raw, they lost by tap out to. And I know Bobby Lashley, the, the counter argument to that is, well, Bobby Lashley is the hurt, the hurt lock or whatever they're calling it. That's a serious move. I mean, the hurt business have been doing jobs on Raw every week, it feels like, whether it's to Ricochet or whether it's to whoever, Apollo Crews, his, his whole crew, all of that sort of stuff. They've been doing jobs. They're hardly... They hardly need the win. I think, if anything, they're bulletproof at this point when it comes to doing jobs on Raw. So why couldn't they do a job to Retribution who needed a win? They needed a win last night and they didn't get it. 
And as Dave mentioned, after the match, you have Bray Wyatt come back out and he absolutely destroyed all of them, apart from Mustafa Ali. It didn't look good. It didn't look good. And it wasn't booked in the way that I would book it. I think it did make him look weak. As a faction that is meant to be all about anarchy and destroying people, when the bow rang, they didn't get it done. And after the bow rang, they also got destroyed as well. It didn't look good. And I can see his point of view of maybe WWE is starting to give up on retribution because if you look historically this kind of booking only leads one way um, but what I will say is that there's nothing confirmed about that there's no sources there's no insider information that's him trying to speculate I would speculate maybe the same thing I'd think that it's funny because if they've given up on retribution it's interesting one that they would have Mustafa Ali just being revealed as their leader only a couple of weeks ago I think that's interesting. I do still think there is a place for them. I do agree with him in the sense that that booking was very strange and it didn't make a lot of sense for them to be just booked so weakly, really. Um, and it is a sign that possibly they are being given up on, but we don't know that yet. We don't know that yet. And maybe there are plans to try and salvage this. This was an angle originally that was meant to be an earth shattering WWE Universe altering angle and that hasn't been the case but that isn't anyone's fault of who's involved in it that's the fault of the powers that be of how they've booked it uh, how they've done the presentation of it I think it's been badly booked and badly presented that's not the fault of people like Dominic Dajakovic that's not the fault of Mustafa Ali and Mia Yim and Shane Thorne and Dio Madden and all of those guys it's not their fault the fault lies at the doors of the creative team at the, the, the door of Vince McMahon the buck stops there because it hasn't been presented wow it hasn't been now, is this a case of what Dave Meltzer said? Is it going to be given up on? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's the case. I think maybe that is a bit of a stretch at the moment. I do like, though, I do like that we are getting uh, we're getting some form of attention on Mustafa Ali. I do like that. And I do like the fact that they've tied in the SmackDown hacking angle. Again, as I mentioned earlier, is it the way that we would have wanted it to go? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But it's progress. It's progress. And I'm all for Mustafa Ali getting some attention. I think he is one of the most underrated superstars on the WWE roster right now. I think he has a huge upside. It's interesting to see how he will work as a heel. I must say that as is, when I was watching his promo last night, I did feel a little bit as, is, this, is, is, this, is he really believable as a heel? I don't know. I don't know. And I felt with the hacking angle that he it almost felt like a baby face. Because he's a former Chicago uh, police officer. He's a good guy. He's for, on the right side of many, many opinions. He's very outspoken. And being a leader of a, an anarchy faction, uh, to, trying to take down corruption, and all this sort of stuff, just doesn't feel in line with him. I don't know. And I did have a, a, a little bit of a difficulty believing some of the heel mannerisms from Mustafa Ali last night. I must say that. But I, I'm just happy for the attention that he's getting. I think he's absolutely worth it. I really do. Now, before we round up here, I do want to also talk about another thing we saw last night on Monday Night Raw was Otis. Otis uh, did make uh, uh, an appearance on Raw last night under a mask as a tag team partner with Tucker, obviously a heavy machinery. Tucker introduced his new tag team partner in a match against The Miz and John Morrison. They're continuing this feud that's bled over from Friday Night Smackdown with Mandy Rose, Tucker, Miz and Morrison all on Monday Night Raw. But so is Otis now because Tucker's new partner last night was a legendary luchador called El Gran Gordo who was obviously Otis in a mask and cape. We've seen that gimmick a million times, whether it's with John Cena, Hulk Hogan, whoever. We've seen the, it's obviously someone under a mask, wink, wink, but it's definitely not them. Um, now, for those who are unaware, El Gran Gordo in the English language roughly translates to, quote, the big fat, in which case it would mean that Otis is the big fat man. <sighs> I don't... <laughs> It's just ridiculous, isn't it? I get it. We get it. Otis is a big guy and he eats a lot. He carries around his Money in the Bank stuff in a lunchbox that also has deli meats in. We get it. Vincent Mann thinks he's funny because he's fat. But this presentation is ruining Otis. It's ruining him. Otis, for me, when he won the Money in the Bank originally, I felt that was doable. I felt that was believable. I thought it was a big a big call for him to be given the contract because it kind of felt a little bit to like to me... Oh, is he really able to go to that next level? Is he really able to be a world champion? But at the time, I was willing to give it a go. But calling him the big fat man and 
constant jokes to him having a big belly and all this kind of stuff. It's just, you can hear, you can almost hear the Vince McMahon cackle, can't you? You can almost hear Vince McMahon backstage going, ah, oh, it's brilliant, it's amazing. And there have been so many reports now of people saying, you know what, this Otis being a world champion, Otis is the money in the bank holder, isn't working, the booking hasn't worked. Again, I don't think it's Otis's fault. I think it's the presentation and the booking's fault. Whoever that is, Vince McMahon, Bruce Pritchard, whoever, it's not working. It's not working when it comes to Otis. But the biggest fan is Vince McMahon. And as long as he's the biggest fan, Otis is going to hold that money in the bank briefcase and he's going to wear a mask and he's going to be called fat. That's... That's what it is. That's what it is, unfortunately. And I just, I don't, I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Well, I do get it, actually, in fairness. I understand that Vince Man thinks it's hilarious. He thinks it's hilarious, but it just doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me. And again, why don't you focus on, oh, this is great at comedy. And he is a big guy, but he can work in the ring. And he does have this, he does have that it factor. He does have charisma. And he does have this sort of element of, when he was first sort of starting out on SmackDown, he is funny and he is genuinely funny and he is genuinely likable. That storyline with Mandy Rose was booked so well. It was so well written. And the moment at WrestleMania where he got the girl, that was a WrestleMania moment. That was one of those moments I said at the time that I was like, oh, I so wish there was a crowd here because that would be awesome in front of a crowd. The reaction would be fantastic. Didn't happen, obviously. But it's just, it's gone too far now. It's gone too far. It's too heavy on the comedy. It's too funny on Vincent Mann doing, doing this and that. And the, the promo last night is that Miz cut on him saying that you're only an underdog because people feel sorry for you. It is the truth. It's the truth. I do feel sorry for him. How can you position Otis as an underdog and say, oh, he's an underdog and he's fighting from underneath? The creative and the storyline is calling him fat. The, he's calling himself fat in the storyline. As a luchador, you're calling him fat. So you're, you, it's difficult to feel sorry for someone who's calling themselves the big fat man. You know, it's, it's backwards. There is no logic there. I don't get it. I don't get it. But of course, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on Otis's luchador alter ego? What are your thoughts on Mustafa Ali as the leader of Retribution? And what are your thoughts on Mustafa Ali revealing that he was the SmackDown hacker? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll be sure to respond and reply to all of your comments or as many as I can anyway. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button as well really just helps out here on YouTube, go up the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestling News 365. We have finally hit over 1,000 subscribers. So thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you who have subscribed. If you haven't, there's no time like the present to subscribe to Wrestling News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video, along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.